one plus one or one plus one or sympathy. That's Godard's title is one plus one, and I think uh, at some point to cash in on the Stones uh, connection, they called it sympathy for the devil. But yeah. I don't think Godard calls it that. It's <laughs> his movie, yeah. so we call it one plus one. It's it's a very strange combination of um, well, a session in the studio with the, with the Stones and. Um, a political Black, Black uh, Panthers and yeah, Black Panthers and, <laughs> <laughs> and Marxism and uh, Mao. Well, wasn't, yeah. wasn't how did the Beatles play into this? He didn't want to do. He and, he yeah, asked he, the Beatles yeah, to do it originally. first, and they 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 met with him, and in the end, were not I don't think super trusting of him, and uh, so he went to the second possible choice, <laughs> the second logical <laughs> choice, which was the Stones, and they agreed. Um, it's probably the better choice. For this, it was yeah. the better choice, yeah. I think. I mean, it would have been interesting to see what he would have done with the Beatles, I mean, certainly. But, um, you know, it was it was towards the end of, I mean, it was in the period right before Godard went to make completely political films, yeah. you know, Ziga Vertov group and, and things like that. So he was definitely strongly emphasizing the political aspect of it. But uh, just luckily, he happened to catch the stones you know, one of their most classic songs and the entire evolution of that song from like this folky jam to the like really intense tribal ritualistic thing it became. And I mean, it's it's remarkable footage of, of the Stones in this. And I mean, it's even if you can't stomach the rest of the film, I mean, I love the film as a whole because it's really uh, quintessential Godard from this period. Yeah. But uh, just for the Stones, uh, stuff alone it's it's an amazing amazing film yeah. but you also uh, can digest the other part of the of the, of the movie or, uh, the I can I can take it in the spirit in which good you know Godard is, is very literary in his films I mean there's a lot of text and there's a lot so there's a lot of spouting of propaganda and proverbs and things in the second in the alternate sections and uh, you know, I don't know if, if he had a particular uh, message he was trying to get across yeah. as much as just trying to create a very complex uh, <laughs> viewing experience. And, uh, you know, it was, I mean, the Stones on the one hand were, especially given the song they were doing, I mean, it was a song about rebellion and youth rebellion to some degree. And, and also, you know, the song mentions you know, uh, Russian Revolution and the yeah. uh, Kennedys getting killed and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And, and you know, to couple that with this this uh, footage of the Panther, these Panthers and revolutionaries and like young white girls attached to them, uh, sort of spouting revolutionary proverbs. Uh, uh, I, I, know, I, think it was, I think it was an interesting combination. Yeah, I don't think that there is at this moment any known or big director who who still makes this kind of political movies, is, is that... Except Godard, he's yeah, still making yeah, yeah. them, you know, he's he still making uh, adventurous films, but no, I mean, and, and at the time, you know, he was, you know, you would still consider, I mean, he had a couple big successes, but you would consider it an underground film to some degree, I mean, s you know, similar to Marquis' film or to the Pettibone films or whatnot, I mean, you know, it was, it did have a very popular rock group in it, but, uh, you know, he was maybe using that to draw people in. And is the way in in which the Rolling Stones were, uh, were recording a song in the studio in in any way comparable to the way Sonic Youth is recording songs in the, in the studio? Uh, um, well, I mean, I guess there's aspects of the way many groups record in the studio, although they really. Um, I mean, I guess so, in, in the sense that you catch the evolution of a song. I mean, you know, we have our own studio, so we're constantly, songs are constantly evolving in a very similar way. And if you heard the first version and the last version, you would say, wow, it really came a long way. Um, you know, the fact that they were working in a, uh, like a professional recording studio, like I assume, you know, paying by the day or whatever it is, obviously they didn't have to worry about what it cost at this point. but. Um, to see them working out songs in the studio in that way, um, it, it's interesting to see. I don't think many bands have the luxury to work out songs in the studio yeah. like that. I mean, like I say, we do, but we have our own studio, so it's more like your clubhouse or something. Yeah. It's not a studio in the same sense of the word. Um, but, you know, in terms of the way songs evolve, I mean, they, you know, he really, 
it's amazing that he picked that he managed to get that That's song that, yeah. Yeah. because it's the song that epitomizes this period of the Stones and. Uh, it's just remarkable on yeah. that level to see that development. I mean, because the way it starts is nothing like the way it ends up. I mean, it's kind of a marvelous look at how their inner workings took place. Great film.